Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors, including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. Now we do our best each week to bring you tasteful content, but viewer discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This week, our journey begins in Seaford to meet farrier John Whaley. We head down the dusty trail to Southern Delaware Therapeutic Riding in Milton. Scorchy Taws takes us to a dandy farms in Greenwood. And we circle the wagons back to Seaford for riding lessons at Single Tree Stables. The Outdoors Delmarva Equestrian Special starts right now. Welcome to Outdoors Delmarva, the show dedicated to a commitment of conservation and to the community that makes Delmarva's outdoors such a hidden gem here in the Mid-Atlantic. My name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch. And this is Tucker. Now, Lauren, you look pretty good up there, but uh, the fact hasn't escaped me that I'm in need of my own trusty steed. Well, don't worry, Jason. I've got you covered. <laughs> there you go. Tucker Jr. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now, here's Jason Lee and Lauren Hitch. Jason, have you ever had a pedicure? <laughs> no. Well, I highly recommend them, they're great. I'll have to take your word on it, uh, but I do know that Tucker here loves them. Yeah, he does. And Farrier John Whaley recently stopped by and showed us how much he loves them and told us about how important they are for a horse's overall health. All the horses need their feet taken care of, but Tucker was needing some extra attention back in the winter. Had a little bit of founder a couple months back, and he's had some expansion in the white line, which is the line between the lamina between the hoof itself and the outer wall and sometimes when they do that they get separation and separation got dirt in there and expanded it and kind of cracked the outer wall of his hoof and we've been working on getting that cleared up. John has had a long relationship with Tucker, which is pretty important when it comes to taking care of the business end of an animal this big. Tucker has just always been a good boy since he was little, little a baby. But I started him under saddle as a three-year-old, or well, two and a half. He's just always been a really nice boy. Little did I know he would ever end up at a police department being a mounted unit. He guy gets used to the routine, and that's what he likes. <laughs> oh, bud. Tucker was getting weekly visits from John at one point, but I asked how long a typical shoeing lasts on those horses that weren't in need of the extra care. Uh, six to eight weeks, so usually. Eight weeks it's pretty well the average for most horses. Some grow a little slower than others. In the winter time, they grow a little slower. Tucker never seemed to be in any discomfort during John's visit, but I felt I needed to ask the questions out loud on if the horse ever feels pain during a shoeing. You can definitely trim them too short and make them very, very sore, if not completely lame. If you put the nail in the wrong spot, it'll be uncomfortable, but as long as you keep the nails where they're supposed to be, they don't even feel it. And if you have a horse or thinking about getting one, the old adage of do not try this at home rings loud and it should ring often. Definitely leave it to a professional, someone that has the experience because not something you want to do out of the blue. Jason, that didn't look so bad. Maybe John can get you on his schedule to take care of your hooves. <laughs> I'm going to file that one under highly doubtful. Still to come on the show, Scorchy Taws takes us to a dandy farms in Greenwood to meet a couple of new additions to the family. But up next, we head to Milton to introduce you to the folks of Southern Delaware Therapeutic Riding. Outdoors Delmarva presented by Gateway Subaru. We'll be right back. 
You're watching Outdoors Delmarva presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Welcome back to the Outdoors Del Marva Equestrian Special. Now, Lauren, any day that we can hang out with Tucker is a good day. Right, and just being around horses has a natural calming effect, which is what we learn when we stop by the Southern Delaware Therapeutic Riding in Milton. We know that, that, that horses and people, you know, have a special bond, you know, people, you know, it's how, but how, but how did they get to a point where they said, you know what, we're going to make that bond therapy. Well, therapeutic riding's been around for a, a number of years, but it certainly has grown in popularity. And um, I think it's just that bond that you're talking about, mm -hmm. because these are just magnificent animals, yeah. and uh, they are absolutely therapeutic. It doesn't matter if you're on their back or if you're on the ground. So uh, that's why we talk about participants rather than just riders because we have a lot of groundwork that you can do. You learn how to groom a horse, uh, which is uh, very therapeutic. And actually what we find is that our volunteers find the therapy for themselves. Oh, sure. As well. So um, it's quite a, a giving environment, if you will. So we uh, have riders. We um, Actually, we have what we call participants uh, from the age of four all the way to the age of 74. And we do uh, adults and children with disabilities. And that could be people that are requiring uh, their mental well-being as well as their physical well-being. 98% of this organization is volunteers. Wow. Which is quite significant. And so we have a volunteer program, we have a veterans program that we established a few years ago. And so all of those kinds of things really meld together to create this very therapeutic environment. We're here with Kelly. Kelly, tell us a little about these riders and how they get started in a program like this. So there, there's definitely um, thought that goes into what horse goes with which rider. So if it is a rider that may be very vocal, um, may have a trouble sitting still, we have to make sure we have a horse that can tolerate that movement and noise on their back. Um, some riders that may have uh, cerebral palsy can be very tight in their hips, so they have to have a more narrow horse that they sit on. Whereas other riders that may have a lower tone need a wider base of support um, to make them feel safe and secure when riding. What does something like this mean for the rider? For the riders, this is um, an activity that they are able to do regardless of whether they can walk in on their own two feet or they may come in, um, they may be a wheelchair user, um, they may be verbal, they may be nonverbal. Um, it doesn't matter because the horses don't judge. And then the physical aspect is the strength you gain from riding. It is not just sitting there looking good. It's a full body workout. So it's a lot of core as well as leg and, and arm movement. And so many of our riders, um, I have one little guy who has CP and his PT saw after about two months of riding that he was able to sit up independently and do some stretching exercises he wasn't able to do before. And so, and the mom said the only thing that changed in his routine was the riding lessons were added to it. So that just goes to show the physical aspect of it, of how it improves an individual. Truly amazing work they're doing in Milton. Yes, indeed. And to learn more or to get involved, go online to sdtrhr.com. We continue our equestrian special when Outdoors No Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru, returns. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine. Everything but the water. And Bell Creek Equipment. For farm, home, or fun, Bell Creek is number one. Welcome back to the Outdoors Del Marva Equestrian Special. We're saddling up and galloping all the way to Greenwood in this week's Remembering Scorchy Taws. Honoring the life and legacy of Scorchy Taws. Thanks to Shorts Marine in Long Neck, Delaware. Shorts Marine, everything but the water. 
there's three new dandies at a dandy farms in Greenwood, Delaware. Tika, Ben Malika, and Diona. Egyptian Arabian horses recently flown in from Israel to be further polished for the show ring by a dandy's Kathy Vinson. I'm going to show you two of the three horses that came in. And you're going to see one mare that's a uh, two-year-old, will be three, uh, by a straight crabbit stallion. I think she was bred in England and imported to Israel. In my opinion, she is of the, qual the national quality. She can come to this country and really go places. But more importantly, Kathy Vinson herself has really gone places since we last visited with her at a dandy three years ago. A top-rated trainer for many years, she has now climbed the ladder of success from a national to now an international judge of Arabian horses. Last October, I went to Israel to judge their national championship. I met the owners of the horses and I visited all the ranches after the show was over and really had a wonderful experience. From that Israeli experience came the three Egyptian Arabians, including the yearling Ben Malika you are now watching, all shipped to her by their owners, the King Solomon Arabian Partnership. They were obviously impressed by the professionalism of this dedicated trainer from Delaware's Sussex County. To me, this horse business has just been my savior. I just absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's been the only thing I've ever done, the only way I've ever made any money, the only way I've ever, ever made a living, and it's, it's my whole life. And why has that life been dedicated to Arabians only? Because they're the most beautiful of any breed. Oh, they just, they, they carry themselves with such presence. They're very intelligent horses. They're very uh, loving horses, very well-mannered horses. There's nothing like an Arabian horse. Which simply means Tika, Ben Malika, and Diona are in good hands. Scorchy Taw is one in our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Remembering Scorchy Taws is presented by Shorts Marine, online at shortsmarine.com. Did you know that horses of Assateague are managed by the National Park Service on the Maryland side and by the Chincoteague Volunteer Fire Company on the Virginia side? Did you know that even though fully grown, the horses are referred to as ponies due to their smaller stature as a result of their diet and habitat? And did you know that the first pony penning occurred in 1835, but it wasn't an official event until 1924 when the Chincoteague Volunteer Fire Company auctioned off ponies to help pay for new equipment? Now you do! Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine, everything but the water, and Bell Creek Equipment. For farm, home, or fun, Bell Creek is number one. Welcome back to the Outdoors Del Marva Equestrian Special. Jason, I gotta tell you, riding a horse is absolutely nothing like riding a bike. <laughs> You're right about that, and if you want to ride like a pro, you gotta take lessons from a pro. Enter Molly Esterson of Singletree Stables. October is our going into our 53rd year, and Janet Esterson, my mom, had started the riding school in 1970. And then when I graduated college in March of 76, she handed the business over to me. We have been very fortunate and we have had several generations come through here. Very fortunate. Today we'll run through um, what one would expect when they come. I have various riders out there with different styles. There's their English and Western. Those two are the most popular at this time. Um, when we do go in schooling barn, I do offer the saddle seat, the flat saddle, and the side saddle. And I have an English and a Western side saddle that we can um, see later on. I've been extremely fortunate with the herd that I have. The, right now, I've got a senior center. 
They're all ages 21 to 32. A lot of them now are 27 to 32. And they've been with us since the age of four or nine. So they're, they're really family. They've been a good group of horses, not just because they're mine, but I've, I've been like a proud uh, parent because I've had farriers and vets speak highly of this livestock. And I just, green, <laughs> green. I've actually had a vet say, they would like to retire in my barn. So It's not just riding when you own a horse. There's more involved. It's more than taking care of a cat or a dog or your hamster. So, And some people think I'm crazy because I'm out here in all types of elements of, of weather, but I still just love what I, what I do. I'm fortunate that some of my students and their parents will jump in and, and help me at times if I've asked for assistance, because it's not easy for me to ask for assistance at all. But uh, they know when I do, I, I need it, and they jump forward and help me, and I really appreciate that. But I don't have retirement in my vocabulary. I, as long as I have my health, I plan to, to continue on to my best ability. From Singletree Stables in Seifert, get out and enjoy the great outdoors on horseback. If you want to brush up on your riding skills or get your feet in the stirrups for the first time, you can go to singletreestables.net. After the break, we'll ride off into the sunset with your latest viewer photos. Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru, returns right after this. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Welcome back to Outdoors Delmarva. It's time to flip through the photo album and take a look at your latest pictures thanks to our friends at North Bay Marina. Melissa Abbott of Dorchester County reeled in this good looking rock from the Honga River. Kevin Lane of Preston and Dickie Lane of Ridgely appear to have had pretty successful turkey hunts this year. J.R. Griffith of Milford is on a hot streak with this 34 inch striper he got at Cape Enlopen State Park to go along with this 41 incher he got while surf fishing on Assateague Island. Chris Connolly snapped a couple of photos of how he spent Memorial Day weekend fishing in front of the Observation Tower on York Beach Crossing in Fenwick. Gil Condor sent in a couple of great photos, this one of sunrise over Angola Beach and Estate in Lewis, and this one from the Gordon Pond Wildlife Area on the southern end of Cape Enlopen State Park. Frank and Erlene Boche of Lincoln took a trip out to Yellowstone and shared a couple of videos with us, this one of a grizzly taking a post-hibernation stroll. And here, we see a pretty typical Wyoming traffic jam. Outdoors Delmarva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Before we throw a lasso around this week's episode, Jason, we want to talk about a new feature. You got that right, partner. We are going to feature some real works of art from Longhorn Butcher and Taxidermy in Pittsville. We're calling this the Mount of the Week. This 15-pointer was harvested by Brian Smith in Somerset County. To check out more great mounts or to possibly even get your own, and of course for all of your butcher needs, check out Longhorn Butcher and Taxidermy on Facebook. And before we let you go, we want to talk about our new show sponsor, Bell Creek Equipment. For the farm or home, or just for fun, stop by their Preston location or go online to bellcreekequipment.net. And tell Charlie we said hi. Well, it's time to put this horse in the stable. Until we see each other again, my name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch, and we hope to see you Outdoors Delmarva. Outdoors Delmarva, a Draper Media production, is presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine and Bell Creek Equipment.